The way you connect a magic mouse to your iPad has been changing throughout the time, so here's the latest way to do it. On iPad Pro running iPad OS 16. If we haven't met before, this is Foxdeck, a channel where we answer your questions about Apple products instead of reviewing the latest ones. Okay, so you grab your magic mouse. If it's the second gen, make sure it's charged. If it's the first gen, then just get the right batteries inside and ensure that it works. You open up settings and you go right to the Bluetooth section on iPad. I'm saying this because back in the day, it was buried in the accessibility settings and you had to connect through there. It's not the case anymore. The first thing that I advise you to do would be to disconnect it from other devices. If you're using your magic mouse with your Mac, for example, just unclick it there, disconnect it so it can be ready for the iPad. In the Bluetooth section, wait for the magic mouse to appear. If it can't show up there, turn off the mouse and turn it back on. Maybe you didn't even have it turned on to begin with. So just take a look at the back side of the mouse and you need to have the button in a way that you see the green color behind it. That indicates that it's ready to be used. Now click on the magic mouse and you're good to go. So how do you actually use it? iPads are not MacBooks and although there is support for external mouse, since iPadOS or iOS 13.4, it only works within the realms of iPad. So you don't have the arrow pointing cursor, just the circle one for example. I mean, I'm gonna show you how to customize it in just a second. And I'm not saying it's difficult to use or anything, it's just different from your computer. If you hover over the apps, the whole icon gets selected and so on. So typical iOS and iPadOS behavior. To keep track of the battery, you can simply use the battery widget. In iPadOS, there are three types of battery widgets, and they can be placed anywhere on the home screen. Plus, it can also be added to the widgets panel, which is accessible by scrolling all the way to the right. So there are multiple options, and it should also inform you whenever you're running low on a battery. And to be informed about future videos like this one, you need to subscribe to Foxdeck. Here on YouTube, of course, you're going to find hundreds of tutorials. So why are you hesitating? Now, as I said, the customization options are very limited on the iPad, but there is still something at least. There are actually two places in the settings where you can customize Magic Mouse. In a general, then trackpad and mouse, you can customize the speed of the pointer and make it slower or faster. Natural scrolling changes the orientation in which the scrolling's gonna go when you swipe the mouse, so play around with that. And also secondary click, which is our common right click action, and it can be turned on here as well. The second place to customize the magic mouse is in the pointer settings. So you're gonna get there by going to the accessibility and pointer control. Here you can change things like the color, outline and visual stuff like this. I go in depth about this topic for about 4 minutes in another video, so there I explain and show everything what this section can do. Definitely check it out and it's gonna be linked down below in the description, it's all about customizing the cursor and the pointer on the iPad. And one more thing I want to touch on would be to really consider this option. If you have a spare Magic Mouse laying around and want to connect it to an iPad, fair enough, but buying a new one just for the iPad, well, not sure about it. If you buy the Magic Keyboard with the trackpad built in, you get the same functionality from trackpad and a whole keyboard plus a case at the same time. It's more expensive for sure, but I just wanted to say to you that you should consider what you want in case you plan on buying the mouse just for the iPad. I do hope you'll be happy with your Magic Mouse connected to the iPad. If you've ever wondered what's the difference between the Magic Mouse first and second generation, like in the depth comparison, then check out this video right here and you're gonna find out about all of the minor and bigger differences as well.